of you, here we begin with the second class for CMA final. And so nice to know with all your messages that you have completed four to five videos for CMA inter revision that will help you to build a superb background. Today we are doing the new tax regime that is section 115 BAC provisions. And because there are a lot of amendments in 2023 also in the new tax regime, which are not applicable for our exam. But because of that, this topic has become very important now. Okay. So as I start this topic before that, you tell me, are there any doubts in the old tax regime, which we have finished in the last class? Individual should pay as per the tax rates, basic exemption, non-residence, even if they are 82 years they don't get the benefit of additional basic exemption. Concept of rebate. Unutilized basic exemption. It's the most important class I'm telling you. Watch it once again. You all have got that benefit of listening to the live classes also and the recording also. Marginal relief. Five marks exclusive question can be asked. Special income, special rates. Concept of surcharge, rebate. All this we have done in the last class. Today, we are doing new tax regime. The next class, we will be doing alternative minimum tax and then MAT and return of income and charitable trust and so on. Okay. Now, when I'm saying new tax regime, this is a different way of tax calculation. Your routine is clear up to 250,000 nil, 250,000 to 5 lakh 5%. 5 lakh to 10 lakh, 20%, 10 lakh above and so on. In the new tax regime, the way you are calculating tax is different. And this is optional. You can go for the old tax regime. You can go for the new tax regime. But when you go for new tax regime, certain deductions and exemptions which are allowed are not allowed here. And even the tax calculation is different. So what we will do is coming 45 minutes, one hour, whatever is required. Let us first learn the new tax regime. Once we know how the new tax regime works and yesterday we have already done the old tax regime. We can solve problems comparative. As an individual, if I go with old tax regime, what would be my tax? If I go with new tax regime, what would be my tax? Is this clear? And definitely they can ask you questions. Today, I'll solve one or two problems. And the recent exam, the one which came, one more, I'll be sending you in our WhatsApp group and that also you should do. So ready to go? Hmm? In your material, next only after this, it is given. We have finished yesterday. I'm sharing the screen. I hope it is clear to all of you. All this surcharge and all this we have finished. Hmm? Tax planning, tax avoidance, this we have done. Alternative tax regime. This is called as section 115 BAC. The terms and conditions are very important for your uh, MCQs also. This new scheme is applicable only for individual and HUF. So this 115 BAC is not applicable for BOI, AOP, AJP and all. It is applicable only for individuals and HUFs. Okay. They have an option to pay the tax at new tax regime rates. What is the slab rate? Up to 250,000 nil. 250 to 5 lakh 5%. Ma'am, this is the same. 5 lakh to 7 lakh 50,000, 10%. 750 to 10 lakh, 15%. 10 lakh to 12 lakh 50,000, 20%. 12 lakh 50,000 and above to 15 lakhs, 25%. Above 15 lakhs, 30%. Now, where is the difference? Till here it is same. Now, old tax regime may 5 to 10 lakh directly it is 20%. Here for every 2,50,000 increase in the total income, the tax rate is increasing by 5%. Just give me two minutes, I'll be back here only. Till then, just compare the old and new. Here then, 10 lakhs and above it is how much? 30%. Here, 15 lakhs and above it is 30%. Check this.
Nice. Chalo. So this, yes, this tax rates you'll have to remember. Up to 2,50,000 nil. 250 to 5 lakh. 5%. 5 lakh to 750. Then 15, 10%. 750 to 10 lakh, 15%. 10 lakh to 12 lakh, 50,000. Like that, for every 2 lakh, 50,000 increase, <clears throat> the percentage is increasing by 5%. Now, alternative minimum tax, which is also applicable for individuals and HFs, we will see in tomorrow's class. It is called as minimum AMT you have to pay, irrespective of your tax rates. So, if individuals and HFs are opting for 115 BAC, then they are not liable for uh, minimum or AMT, that is minimum tax as per 115 JC. 115 JB we will do, that is MAT, that is also a minimum tax, but that is applicable as per the companies. Clear? So, if the broad forward AMT credit is there, Ma'am, until now I was having AMD, uh, you know, it was alternative minimum tax. And now I want to go for 115 BAC, new tax regime. Can I set off that AMT credit here? Answer is no. First you go in AMT, do all that set off and then go to the new tax regime. Once again, a, this new tax regime, what is the section? 115 BAC. And it is applicable for whom? It is applicable only for individuals and HUFs. And will the individual and HUF get rebate in the scheme, new tax regime or alternative tax regime? Answer is yes. Acha, what about special incomes? You remember in the last class, I have told you, dear students, special incomes are chargeable at special rates. For example, lottery at 30% and long-term capital gain and so on. Okay. So, normal incomes are chargeable at normal rate, these rates. And special incomes are taxable. Okay. Special incomes are taxable at the slab rates. Flat rates, whatever rates are applicable. Surcharge concept is also there. Now, this can be asked in MCQ. It says same rate are applicable for non-resident senior citizen, super senior citizen. So, Mr. X, aged 82 years, wants to go for new tax regime. What will be the basic exemption? 2,50,000. Once again, if you are paying tax in new tax regime, additional basic exemption for senior citizen, how much it is? 3 lakh. For super senior citizen, 5 lakh. That is not applicable. Clear to all of you? Right? Okay. Now, conditions to be satisfied. Here we complete with the basics. Is there any doubt in the basics? Put it in chat box or clear. New tax regime is applicable for individual and HUF. Tax rates, you have to pay like this normal income. Special income, special rates, you have to pay the tax. Okay. Rebate, surcharge, rest, all same. And seniority benefit is not given to anyone. Now, when you are paying tax as per new regime, instead of 10 lakhs up to 15 lakhs, it is only 25% tax. Above 15 lakhs, it is 30%. TK? Right. Okay. So now above 15 lakhs, if it is 30%, then definitely you are paying tax at lower rate. So, some deductions or some exemptions which are allowed in old tax regime are not allowed in the new tax regime. What are they? Following are the conditions to be satisfied. Under 115 BAC, it provides that while computing total income, following deductions would not be allowed if they opt for this. Please don't learn it as theory. What is not allowed? Give a list and all. No. Understand the concept and at the end, we will work out a problem to check the application of this knowledge. Let us first start with section 10. You remember section 10 is all exemptions. So some exemptions will not be allowed. First one, 10-5 May, leave travel concession. Leave travel concession in the four calendar years, two visit to hometown with family, economic class flight ticket, 
that leave travel allowance is not exempt. Then 1013A HRA, house rent allowance, 50% rent paid minus 50% of salary and all that was allowed as deduction under section 1013A, that part was exempt for HRA. That is not allowed if you are receiving salary and you want to go for alternative tax bridging. Next, 1014. You know, 1014 is those special exemptions like education allowance up to 100, hostel expenditure 400. Those special allowances are also not allowed. 1017 is daily allowances to MPs and MLAs. MPs and MLAs, they get daily allowances for a few things and they are not exempt. They'll become taxable. 1032, everyone knows this is kind of revision. Exemption in respect of income of minor child. You know, when minor's income is clubbed in the hands of the father, okay, for every minor, how much deduction is allowed just for the sake of knowledge? 1500 per child. For how many children? Say, for how many children? Huh? No upper limit ki maximum two children. If three children's income is clubbed in the hands of my father, for every child, he gets an exemption under section 1032, 1500 per child. That exemption is not allowed if you are going for new tax regime. So, kuch paana hai to kuch khona hai. You are getting that additional benefit, no? That till 15 lakhs, 30% slab rate is not there. In that case, this new regime, you will not get all these exemptions. Last is tax holiday. We all know SEZ will get the tax holiday. Uh, whatever export profit is there and export turnover there, proportionate is exempt. That exemption will not be given if you are going for new tax regime. So section 10 related is this. I know it is very simple for me to read and explain this chapter. For you to understand, it is simple, dear students. But you will have to repeat this list so that in exam you remember, okay, if it is normal salary, we give HRA, leave travel allowance, ye, wo sab dete. but if it is this, these exemptions are not allowed. Coming to the head of salary, standard deduction is not allowed. You know why I am writing? By that way, I am revising all your inter-level background. And be the recent exam, recent which was the exam January 23, one MCQ from house property, one from business head, one from capital gain, one from salary and two marks. So why to let go of those marks? Can you put it in the chat box how much standard deduction is allowed in salaries? Anyone knows? Say How much standard deduction is allowed? Whatever is your gross salary, you get only three deductions. Standard deduction, entertainment allowance and PT. So these deductions will not be allowed if you are going for new tax regime. Ma'am, means can be, I want all of you to do 3D and 5D makeup of your uh, workbook. Workbook you all have received, right? So here you write. If you are going for new tax regime, gross salary is equal to net salary is equal to taxable salary. No deduction. No deduction you will get. Hmm. Standard deduction is allowed flat 50,000. Up to 50,000 of the gross salary is exempt. That's why I'm telling you watch the videos repeatedly. Some of you have, if I'm saying standard deduction, you are going to house property. House property may correct it. GAV ka 30% milta hai. Not here, dear students. No problem. If you are learning it right now with me, that's the importance of revision videos which I have provided. Standard deduction under the head salaries is flat 50,000. Entertainment allowance is given only to government employees. This all will be NA, huh? not allowed. So, ma'am, why are you studying? Just for the understanding, that entertainment allowance was given under section 16, subsection 2, but it will not Profession tax. You remember so many times we have heard people saying, our gross salary is 
थाउजेंड रुपीज है बट कार्ड कोड के हाथ में एट हंड्रेड आता है तो वॉट इज दैट कार्ड कोड के टी डी एस पी टी सो प्रोफेशन टैक्स एम्प्लॉय एज वेल एज एम्प्लॉयर ऑल शुड पे अंडर द शॉप एंड एस्टेब्लिशमेंट एक्ट सो पी टी इफ प्रोफेशन टैक्स इज डिडक्टेड बाई एम्प्लॉयर एंड पे यू गेट अ डिडक्शन बट यू विल नॉट गेट इफ यू गो फॉर न्यू टैक्स रिजन it's like you know close your eyes and say in new tax regime gross salary is equal to your uh, taxable salary no deductions is my speed fine if you want i can go still slow because new tax regime is a chapter where the whole package of inter level all the topics i will be touching up so even if i am taking half an hour extra one class extra no target ki isko khatam karna hai bas exceptions few will be allowed transport allowance you know if an employee is handicapped and they get transport allowance up to 3200 per month is allowed transport allowance is allowed exempted even in new tax regime 3200 per month for handicapped employee can i not print all this in the material but i want it to be imprinted in the mind that's why i am making you write this conveyance allowance to and fro office and all is allowed any allowance grant to meet up the travel on tour or transfers you know like official travels whatever you are doing is allowed daily allowances if you get daily allowances if you are in you know hilly area mines where there is risk of life and all you get daily allowances so they are exempt once again check the list of exemptions and then check the list of salary chapter is it clear after salary what is the second head income from house property what is the relationship employer employee relationship uh, sorry house property mein kya hai owner and tenant relationship so interest on loan in self occupied property na not allowed you remember we can uh, divide the house properties into three that is self occupied property let out property and deemed let out property self occupied let out and deemed let out so in self occupied property because i am staying in my own house gav is nil nav is nil but still interest on loan is allowed can i stay in my own house and can i pay the housing loan emi interest till 15 16 years and claim as deduction answer is yes so please remember in self occupied property always there is loss because gav nav is nil and interest on loan was allowed now why this big was because interest on loan is not going to be allowed if you are going for new tax regime Ma'am means in new tax regime we cannot show loss in the house property. Answer is yes. You will have to watch this lecture again after finishing of your heads of income. That's why if you remember in the last class I said at least important all the heads of income के जो video है वो देख लो. नहीं देखे तो watch those revision videos and again if you want extra views for that revision videos please let me know. I will do that extension. but unless you are thorough with that final is not going to be easy for you next 30 to 1 to a you know normal depreciation in the business head is allowed under uh, what do you say um section 32 it is allowed in the new tax regime also in business income you can claim depreciation but you cannot claim additional depreciation if you are a manufacturer then additional depreciation is allowed no that you can't claim additional depreciation okay right next deduction in respect of scientific research you all remember in house scientific research and universities for statistical research and all uh, you get a deduction of 100% if you are having your business if you are doing in house r and d or you are having business but you have donated for research and development to national laboratories and universities and colleges you get deductions those deductions are any 
not allowed. Let us read one by one. Notified research associations, universities, Indian Company for Scientific Research. Huh? How many of you have cleared the exam long back and are not able to recollect? Let me know so that for more I'll have to talk. If any students have cleared their inter exam before two years, it was weighted deduction for scientific research. 125%, 150%, but that is done away with now. It's exactly 100% deduction only now. Okay? Next, 35 AD, investment linked incentives for business. You know, when you set up specified business, warehousing business, manufacturing of fertilizers, iron ore, two star and above hotel, multi-speciality hospitals, you are doing a specified business, then you can deduct capital and revenue expense all. That is what is 35AD. That deduction will not be allowed if you go for new tax regime. Deduction in respect of notified agricultural project. Nowadays, agricultural activity is not farmer's activity. We have horticulture colleges where students are doing graduation and post-graduation. That's why earlier, like rarely seen fruits, dragon fruit, kiwi, sweet corns, now they are available freely. So this, this uh, agricultural farming, if you are doing certain projects, which is encouraging farming, and you were claiming a business head deduction, now it will not be allowed. Deduction for business heads are over. If you want, you can make an aroma. And this is like business head. Ye akela tha jo income from house property tha. Uske pehle jo te, these are all like from salary. Clear? Clear until now. Now let us go to capital gain. Capital gain rarely comes. It's not a routine income. When you transfer a capital asset and if there is profit, then you call it short term, long term and you pay the tax. So no change whether you are paying tax in old or new tax regime. I'll tell you the logic behind it. Old and new tax regime is for your normal income. Capital gain income is special income taxed at special rates which we have discussed in the last class. So no change. Now come to income from other sources. Gift and uh, saving account interest and FD interest and board sitting fees and all. Here, you are getting a deduction in family pension, one third or 15,000, whichever is lower, in income from other sources, which is not applicable now. If you are going for new tax regime, this deduction is not allowed. Next, ATC to ATU. Once you compute five heads of income, it's called as your gross total income. From that, you give deductions ATC, PPF, LIC, ATU, handicap. Bohut sare deductions you give. So deductions under chapter 6A are not allowed other than contribution towards NPS under ATCCD2. National pension scheme may if you are contributing ATCCD2, okay, other than employers. So employers contribution deduction is allowed. And deduction is allowed if you employ new employees under ATWJWA. It's not in depth. I don't think they'll ask you. ATWJWA. If you employ new workers, if you pay them 100 rupees wages, 30%, you get additional deductions. Because you are helping to meet up one of India's major problem that is unemployment. So ATC to ATU, you cannot claim any deduction if you are going for new tax regime except, except ATCCD2 National Pension Scheme and ATWJW. First, just scroll up in your material and I'm taking a pause. I'm here only. If you have any doubt, unmute and ask. Or put it in the chat box. Bolo. Check karo isko wapis padu.
the more problems we solve, it will be clear the new text will be. Clear until now. No doubt. Yeah. Somewhere if you are like listening with a lot of surprise ki ye kya cheez hai, scientific research 35 AD, then one simple request is no problem. Just open any of your inter materials if you don't have on the website also it is there and just refer that again. Just click 35 AD. Google will also give you information, the list. Hmm? So like this, just crawl back and revise so that you are clear with all this. Yeah, very correct. Depreciation is allowed in the old tax regime and new tax regime. But in old regime, if you are a manufacturer, if you have purchased a new plant and machinery, you are getting 20% additional depreciation. That additional depreciation will be not allowed. All this is a list of deductions which are not allowed. Not allowed. If you want, put this in bold. Clear? All these exemptions, not allowed. Salary, may all the deductions, not allowed. Interest on self-occupied property, not allowed. Additional depreciation, scientific research, not allowed. 35 AD deductions, not allowed. Family pension, not allowed. ATC to ATU, not allowed. Ma'am, why like this? This is the, frankly speaking, to be very frank, this is unnecessary. They have made it complicated. And uh, I don't know, as an investor, I feel why I will pay the tax in new tax regime if I generally, you know, every layman puts the money in PPF. This is not relevant for the exam, but you should understand the practical implication. See, I, I have you heard people around you, your parents or anyone, ha, PF mein thoda paisa to dalte hain. LIC, they generally take up simple policy, term policy, at least for 50,000 to 1 lakh rupees maturity. Utna to lay lete hain, small people also. So PPF, LIC. So government was trying to encourage ki from your income you save and put it in good investment so that whenever at retirement you need money, you will get it from PPF and LIC. Now, if I am paying tax in new regime, I am not getting any benefit of putting the money in PPF and LIC. In short, we are discouraging people from making good investments. So I don't feel it is right, but up here, new tax regime. Okay? Next, while computing total income set off of any losses carry forward or depreciation from earlier year, if such loss or depreciation is attributable to above, will not be allowed. And under house property with loss, under house property with any other head would not be allowed. In house property, if there is a loss, generally we can set up house property loss in business income, house property loss in salary and all. So this kind of set off is not allowed in the new tax regime. That is the meaning of the second line. House property ka loss carry forward hoga. Agar deem let out, let out may see. I'll explain everything. In case of house property, self-occupied property, no question of loss. Because interest on loan is not allowed. And DLOP, deem let out property and let out property. If there is a loss, three. And if there is an income in another property. In one property, three rupees is loss. Another property, five rupees is income. Sorry, yeah, income should be written without bracket. Is my speed fine? You all are following. Can you comment? House property. Self-occupied, you cannot show a loss. Deem let out. Suppose there is a loss. Three. Self, another let out property. Koi kia hai. This is house one. This is house two. There is income. Can I set off like this? Yes. Suppose I change it. Loss is 13. And another house income is 5. Now how much is loss dear students? 8. Can I carry forward this loss? Yes. But can I set off it with business income? Answer is no. In short, house property loss cannot be set off with other heads of income. Now coming to the first one. 
सी साइंटिफिक रिसर्च डिडक्शन से फाइव रुपीज नॉट अलाउड एडिशनल डेप्रीसिएशन थ्री रुपीज नॉट अलाउड वेन दीज डिडक्शन आर नॉट अलाउड रिलेटेड टू दीज डिडक्शन इफ देर इज अ ब्रॉड फॉरवर्ड लॉस ऑफ अर्लियर इयर दैट टाइम आई वॉज नॉट इन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन बी ए सी सो दिस अर्लियर इयर लॉस इज बिकॉज ऑफ साइंटिफिक रिसर्च बिकॉज ऑफ एडिशनल डेप्रीसिएशन will that loss be allowed to be set off answer is no read it again while computing total income set off of any loss carry forward or depreciation from any earlier assessment year if such loss or depreciation is attributable to any of the deductions referred in one above it's not allowed certain losses are not allowed to be set off and simple logic is Ma'am, family pension is only not allowed to related to that loss. Scientific research, as it is, that deduction is not allowed. So, if you have two thousand twenty scientific research loss, can I set it off now? Answer is no. Deduction is not allowed, and related to that, if earlier losses are brought forward, they are also not allowed. Okay, right. so these are all with examples i have made it clear read it again if you have any doubt ask me if you want to note down the examples then i'll have to write it properly in the notebook in dono ke liye now depreciation or additional depreciation depreciation is allowed deduction in respect of block of asset is allowed up to 40% now we all know highest rate of depreciation is only 40% okay additional depreciation is not allowed in case of individual hf opting for 115 bac alternative or new tax regime total income should be computed without set off of any loss brought forward or depreciation from any earlier years where such loss or depreciation is attributable to any of the deductions so such loss depreciation would be deemed to have been already given effect to and no further deduction will be allowed are you getting if there is brought forward business loss because of depreciation allowed additional depreciation not allowed c as per 115 bac additional depreciation brought forward business loss cannot be set off in new tax regime if it pertains to the previous year 10 lakhs is unabsorbed depreciation you know take a pause and listen to me unabsorbed depreciation can be brought forward and set off for n number of years iske liye na thoda out of the background jana padega listen all of you generally all the losses can be carried forward for i mean say they can be carried forward for 8 years and set off speculative loss losses from horse races 4 years set off wala revision lecture dekhna loss due to unabsorbed depreciation is called like a brahmast it can be carried forward for indefinite period not for 4 years 8 years unabsorbed depreciation and because of that if loss is coming say 8 rupees 8 rupees can be carried forward for n number of years and it can be set off in any hands except salary ab ye ma'am kya bol rahe hain there are five heads of income no one and three are not friends who is the first head of income salary who is the third head of income business head they are not friends so unabsorbed depreciation brought forward can be carried forward for indefinite period to be set off anywhere except salary this is the thumb rule now ma'am but unabsorbed depreciation brought forward is 3 lakh because of the normal depreciation 2 lakh because of additional 2 lakhs will lapse ab nahi milega aapko wo set off clear i'll give one more example also and that will make it more clear ye dekho 10 lakh is unabsorbed depreciation of which 6 lakh is normal depreciation and 4 lakh is additional depreciation 6 lakhs can be set off 4 lakhs to be added back to the wd you have 
taken it as a loss to WDV to come kiya hoga na. You must have charged 10 lakh depreciation earlier. That's why you are carrying forward the 10 lakh rupees ka loss. So 4 lakh add back in the WDV. Now only 6 lakhs loss can be carried forward and set off. Take your time. It is like little technical language, fourth and fifth point. If you have a doubt, we can add on more examples. And please add on unabsorbed depreciation. Unabsorbed depreciation can be carried forward for indefinite period. You should know this. It's carried forward for indefinite period. Achha hai, clear hai? Yes. Now the part which I am discussing is Achha, fourth point you want me to repeat? Yeah, this example is clear here. In case of individual and HUF, total income should be computed without set off of the broad forward or depreciation, where such loss or depreciation is attributable to deductions listed above. Such loss and depreciation would have been already given effect to, and no further deduction will be allowed. So, depreciation part I have cleared, but other loss. Say business loss related to scientific research rupees 50000 is brought forward last year last year there was business loss which we have carried forward and that business loss was because of scientific research now this year are you going to get deduction for current year scientific research no so how can we deduct brought forward ma'am this time business income is 80000 can I set off this scientific research wala loss? Answer is no. Normally, business income may you can set off business loss, but not scientific research because scientific research is as it is not allowed as deduction. So they said if any loss or depreciation is attributable, which is not allowed, then no further deduction shall be allowed for any subsequent year. Is the example now clear? This is for other losses and this is for depreciation. Clear? Now what I am discussing, I feel they are many times asking this as MCQs. One line they will give and four bids they will give. This scheme of 115 BAC is optional. Wow. Ma'am, every year we can decide. Can I pay the tax in normal old tax regime? or new tax regime? Answer is yes. You can decide it every year. But if you have business income, then decide once for, continue forever. If you opt out, you can't opt in. I should read, no, as a teacher. But I don't know, good or bad. Few things, very difficult to read word to word. Because we are law. I'll explain in my way. You'll be able to answer in MCQs. Old tax regime, your tax rate wala method yesterday and new tax regime. Individuals and HUFs can choose every year. Ma'am, last year I did with new tax regime. Can I now go with old? Yes. This time again old then new? Yes. You can choose every year if you don't have business income. But if you have business income, then for once you decide you want to go for old or new. Ma'am, I want to go for new. Continue forever. After four years filing the return in new tax regime, ma'am, I want to go for old. Okay, go out. Lifetime, you cannot come in till you have business income. You bilkul clear hai so that you can, you know, hit the MCQ. And this is like a GK kind of question. Ki again, if you don't read also, you should be able to answer. Fir bhi, let us read word to word from here. In case an individual or HUF having no income from business, where such income or HUF has no business income, the option has to be excised along with return of income for previous year. In effect, individual can choose whether or not to exercise each year. I want you to highlight. Isko box mein no business income 
each year you make a choice old new new old 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 whatever in case individual and hu have has business income while filing the return furnishing the return for any year relevant to assessment year 22 21 22 because that's the year when this scheme started one such option is exercised it would continue option can be withdrawn once it was excised by individual and hua for previous year other than the year in which it was excised once they can opt out thereafter individual and hua shall never be eligible to opt in once you opt out you are never eligible to opt in except individual and hua ceases to have business income ma'am when i opted out i was having business income but now i'm not having business income so i have shifted from this to this category now you can choose every year i have given four or five different angles if you have eight nine tangle ask me unmute and ask ya poocho doubt hai to poocho yeah anything <clears throat> Ma'am, in the last point, uh, when you said the individual has ceases to have any business income and he can choose every year to alternate the old and new one. Ma'am, so yeah. once you have, yeah, uh, uh, adding to that point, uh, once he suppose for, for, for suppose let's say he is having a new income regime, he has mm -hmm. stopped his business income, he has gone to old uh, regime. Mm -hmm. Again, he started to have a business income. So, can he have one more withdrawal for that, or he has to go back to the new income itself? Hmm, not allowed. Once you have business income, you have to opt in and continue. If you opt out, he cannot opt in ever again if he is having the business income. Why did you opt out? Because you were not having business income. Then you said, "Chalo, old mate, he can all." Again, you have business income. Still, you cannot opt in. Opting in is only once in lifetime for business income. Clear? Ha. Business hmm. income opting in is fine, ma'am. Choosing hmm. the regime for business income is what I'm concerned. Like while he while he was having a business income, he was in the new regime. He stopped his business income. He went back to his old regime. Hmm. So now he's having business income again. Which uh, regime will be he choosing? The old one or the new one? But old one is, now he cannot opt in okay so when the newest latest one the old one he'll be sticking to that itself he cannot yes. change to the new one okay no okay, okay. right yes. if you have the business income you have to stick to ones but i got your question is very in depth appreciated you are saying because he ceased to have business income he went in the old regime again now he has business income can he again make a choice no this is like Once decided, you have opted out. You can't opt in again. Then, so it will. Its का कोई मतलब ही नहीं रहेगा ना. They said कि option can be withdrawn only once where they have excised and they are having the business income. Again, you have business income. Again, you have opted in. So, फिर once का क्या मतलब रहेगा? So now, is it clear to you? Yes. Right. चलो. Now, consequences for failure to satisfy the condition. This is very simplest one. as we have seen that when you are going for new tax regime you should not take hra you should not take standard deduction you should not take additional depreciation ye nahi wo nahi wo nahi wo nahi and you need to satisfy certain conditions so if you don't satisfy the condition then also automatically you are out of the new tax regime and you have to file the return as if you are following the old tax regime now actually not applicable for our syllabus but just to boost new tax regime From this year, rebate limit, which is otherwise five lakh, is made seven lakhs for the new tax regime. But still, honestly, if you calculate, sometimes or most of the times, the tax is low in the old tax regime because there we are taking lot of deductions. Yeah, for those people, this is my practical experience. I am filing my own family's thirteen returns. So, in case of HUF and some returns. Wherein, as it is, deductions are not there. You know, very senior citizen, they are not paying LIC. After seventy, eighty, who pays LIC? So after seventy years, they are not paying LIC and all. So no point in going in the old regime just for the purpose of deduction because anyhow, I am not availing any deduction. At seventy years, anyhow, I am not getting salary and stuff. 
So for those people, new tax regime. This is just a general idea I'm giving. Otherwise, PPF, LIC, ATCs, your ATD, MediClaim, all that will be there. Basic jo saving account pe milta hai, ATTTA, ATTTB, all that is allowed in the old tax regime only. Okay? So following are the consequences for failure to satisfy conditions. On failure to satisfy conditions mentioned above in any previous year, option excised would be invalid in respect of assessment year relevant to previous year and subsequent year. So option, this option of new tax regime is not applicable because you have not fulfilled the condition. Consequently, other provisions of income tax routine, old provisions would apply as if he has not excised the option for that previous year and the subsequent year. So if you don't comply with the conditions, anyhow you come out. Or if you don't have business income, you have a choice. Come in, come out, go. If you have business income, opt in. Better. If you opt in, don't opt out. Once you opt out, you can't opt in again. Clear? Right. Now, this is just a GK. I feel we should read and understand rather than mugging up. I am employed. I want to deduct TDS for Kasif, for Prerna, for Melisha, all of you. Okay? Now, I want to... You all know how the employers deduct TDS for employee? Huh? They take all the details from you. They give you some form to fill up. And whatever is your tax, they divide by 12. And every month that much TDS is deducted. Okay? So, I am asking to all my employees to give all the income details. And according to that, I have to deduct the TDS. Now, if CASIF is opting for old tax regime, the tax would be different and TDS would be different. Melisha, if you are opting for new tax regime, the tax is different and the TDS will differ. So as an employer, what am I supposed to do? As an employer, on the very 1st April, I will ask my employees, give your details and give your preference. I will, I should deduct TDS as per old regime or as per new regime. And whatever preference employee has given, I will freeze it for 12 months. In between the year, I will not change. You can't tell me after 7 months, ma'am, until now I was doing in the old regime, now I want to go for the new regime. Now tax will be deducted for all the 12 months at the old regime only. But here they have given an emotional benefit. You know what that benefit is? employee has told employer in the month of April to deduct the TDS as per the new tax regime. Then at the time of filing the return, if he wants to change his mind and file the return in old tax regime, can he do so? Answer is yes. Did you get it? I will repeat. For deduction of TDS by employer, employee should decide the option at the beginning of the financial year. Whether he wants the TDS to be deducted at old regime or new regime. Old and new. Decide currently. And consistency will be maintained. But while filing the return, employee cannot be forced. Okay, I have uh, opted for the old regime. TDS is deducted as per old regime. So now I will have to file the return as per old. They can change. Unless they don't have business income. As an employee, if you have business income, then same logic will apply. <clears throat> Very interesting this is. Let us give it a reading. <clears throat> For the purpose of TDS, having income other than income under that profits and gains of business and profession and intending to opt for concessional rate, it is required to intimate to the deductor being his employer of such intention for previous year. You know, intimate the employer. The deductor shall compute the total income and TDS as per 115 BAC if you go. If such intimation is not made, employee, then the employer will deduct without considering. So you just intimate in the beginning. Now, it is also clarified intimation show made to deduction shall be only, intimation made shall be only for the purpose of the TDS during the previous year. It cannot be modified during the year. 
once made in april and august you cannot change the mood however intimation would not amount to excising option and the person shall be required to uh, do so along with return to be furnished under 1391 for that previous year are you getting however intimation would not be amounting to exercising means you have intimated to employer so you cannot change but that does not mean exercising the options in the new regime and the person shall be required to do so along with return thus option at the time of filing the return could be different from what you have intimated to the employer kya language hai no ke jaisa but is it simple or not employer inform your employer at the beginning whether you want to offer old and new and it will not change in between the year cannot be modified during the year once the year is over while filing the return employee has option which could be different from what you have intimated to your employer simple further employee who has income under profits and gains of business an option has been excised once they cannot be changed subsequently accordingly if the employee is having business and profession he has to intimate to employer however intimation to employer in subsequent year must not deviate from option once excise so if you have business income you need to continue if you opt out you can't opt in clear so we are solving the problem related to this but is all the explanation clear or not just 2 minutes break scroll all the concepts because now when i apply this and solve and i will not just solve the problem as per the new regime we will do comparative we will solve the problems and calculate the tax with old and new and then give your expert advice so just 2 minutes break check your watches and check up for once everything all the provisions if you have any doubt somewhere i have marked mcq also तो कहीं कोई भी डाउट है तो सी एज दे आर आस्किंग कंपेयर योर रेग्युलर टैक्स फॉर द कंपनी एंड मैट मेनी टाइम्स इन द एग्जाम दे आर आस्किंग नाउ अ डेज ट्वाइस एंटिल नाउ दे हैव आस्ट कैलकुलेट फॉर इंडिविजुअल रेग्युलर टैक्स दैट इज द ओल्ड स्लैब रेट्स एंड द न्यू टैक्स रिजिंग व्हिच एवर इज बेनिफिशियल ओके सो लाइक दिस स्ट्रेट दे कैन आस्क यू Five marks question, or they can ask you MCQs. For MCQs, most important is like if they don't have business income, they can opt for every year. If they have business income, one opted in, they cannot opt out. TDAs, they decide need to decide it right in the beginning of the year. They cannot change it. Normal depreciation allowed, additional depreciation not allowed. Business losses allowed to be set off and carry forward, but not related to those deductions. Which are not allowed. See deduction for sign business head. Me which deductions are not allowed? Check the list. Additional depreciation, scientific research, thirty five AD specified business, and agricultural project. So if these are not allowed, as it is, if these are not allowed, then why we would allow the losses related to this simple logic? just solve the problem with me it will be very clear and in mcqs they can ask you this dear students that uh, if they are going for new tax regime it is applicable for whom only individual and huf and if he is of 82 years will you get basic exemption of 5 lakh answer is no no additional basic exemptions are applicable rest all surcharge rebate special income special rates all same chal Let us solve problem number two first. Akhil, thirty-five years has provided following details relating to his income for previous year twenty to twenty-three. Income from businesses given to you fifteen lakhs. Income from saving account interest twelve thousand. Interest on PPF. PPF interest is written in income from other sources in inner column, but otherwise it is exempt. Investment in PPF. If you make up to one lakh fifty thousand, you get a deduction under eighty C. At least in after today's class, I want all of you to check eighty C, eighty D, eighty T T A, 
and ATTTB. ये इतने sections तो which are very common and they can ask you in final also. So read this. You are requested to compute his tax liability and advise him whether he should opt for alternative tax regime or not. Is reading the uh, question paper बोलने वाली थी मैं question paper नहीं है. Our material में से problem is clear, right? Let us go to the notebook and solve this. One second. Hmm. Yesterday we have done this unutilized basic exemption. Now below that I am doing this problem. Chalo. Let us call it as concept of alternative tax regime. Alternative tax regime. Section one hundred and fifteen B A C. Okay, right. And let us solve it with two options in particular. Computation of income of Mr. A, and then particulars and two options. Old regime, that is routine tax rates, and new regime or alternative tax regime, hundred and fifteen BC. First, let us compute the income. Then we will compute the tax. So, what is the business income? Business income is fifteen lakhs. Directly they have given. If they would have given add less, we need to work out. In income from other sources, they have saving account interest. Saving account F D. All the interest are always there in income from other sources, and they have P P F interest. Inner column you write down thirty six thousand. Outer column you write down exempt because PPF interest is completely exempt. Okay, now what is your GTI or gross total income? Fifteen lakh twelve thousand. Nice. Now deduction under section eighty C because you have put the money in PPF. Is allowed up to one lakh fifty thousand in the old tax regime. In the new regime, only two deductions are allowed: eighty double J double A, providing employment additional wages to workers, or ekta eighty C C D two. That was national pension scheme. Now total income. Yeah, pick up your calculators and calculate fifteen lakh twelve thousand minus one fifty. Thirteen sixty two, fifteen lakh twelve thousand. Total income is clear. Now let us calculate the tax thereon. One by one, we'll calculate. Let us first calculate the tax over here, old tax regime. So zero to two point five lakh, it is nil. Two point five lakh to five lakh, it is twelve thousand five hundred. Five lakh to ten lakhs, it is twenty percent on the next five lakh. That is one lakh, and whatever is above the ten lakh, three lakh sixty two thousand thirty percent. This is five percent. This is twenty percent. So three lakh sixty two thousand ka thirty percent. Are you all clear? Anyone needs help for the tax calculation? We have done it yesterday also, but still, if you have doubt, ask. Up to ten lakhs, the tax is always one lakh twelve thousand five hundred for normal SSCs here, and beyond that, whatever you get, see the thirty percent. So what is the tax? Two twenty one, one hundred. On that, what is the ECS? Four percent. 
8844. So what is the tax payable? Should write it in the particulars column better. Tax payable. Yes, faster than me. Two lakh. Twenty nine thousand oh sorry one more mistake I did. Did, 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 did can anyone say what mistake I have done one more deduction is allowed which I missed and no one remembered it babe this is the impact you know under section 80 under section 80 TTA saving account interest is exempt up to 10,000. I missed giving that benefit. Under 80 TTB, saving account and FD interest both are allowed up to 50,000. Clear to all of you? Huh? So, this is allowed. Hai. So, this will reduce your income further to 13,52,000. And balance will be 3,52,000 pay. The tax will change. 3,52,000 into 30%. plus plus 1,12,500. That is 2,18,100 into 4%. 8 218 100 8724 is this and so the tax payable is coming to how much calculate and say faster than me 218 100 plus this 226 824 yes now it is correct good if we do mistake here we will remember rounded off you remember section 288 says income is to be rounded off in the multiples of 10. Last class, first class, I have And 288 B says tax should also be rounded off in the multiples of 10. So it will be 226, 820. 226, 824. 226, 820. Take your time. If you have any doubt here, please ask. Then only we will go in the next one. Okay, check and ask if you have any doubt. Old tax regime is clear. Acha, ma'am, in the new tax regime also, uh, shall we have deductions? No deductions. Only ATAAA and ATCCD2. ATCCD2 is allowed for national pension scheme of the employer. 10% hmm? of the basic NDA is allowed. Huh. Non 15 lakh 12,000. Can we calculate the tax as per the new tax regime? And as per the new tax regime now, 0 to 2.5 lakhs. First, nil. Next, 2.5 lakhs. Pay kitna hai? 5%. 12,500. Next, 2.5 lakh that is up to 5 lakh to 7 lakh 50,000. Okay, it is 10 percent that is 25,000. Then next 2.5 lakh it is 15 percent 37,500. Are you all getting 0 to 2.5 lakh? Then 2.5 to 5 lakh, then 5 lakh to 7.5 and 7.5 to 10 lakh. 10 lakh tak to agayam. Ab 10 lakh to 12 lakh 50,000. So on the next 2.5 lakh, it is 20%. And then on the next 2.5 lakh, it is 25%. So 250, 
into 20 percent is 50,000. 250 ka 25 percent is 62,500. And now above 15 lakhs, you have 12,000. Whatever is your income above 15 lakhs, it is taxable at 30 percent. So 12,000 into 30 percent that comes to 3,600. So, what is the total tax payable? 3,600 plus 6,200 plus 50,000 plus 37,500 plus 25,000 plus 12,500. Yes. Thank you for calculating faster than me. Yes. Answer is correct. 191, 100. 191, 100. 1,91,100 and on that 4% is the ESES, 7,644 is the CES, 4% add it and what is your tax payable? 191,100. So, 198,744. One second, oh dear students. Hmm. So, which tax is beneficial for him, old or new? Which one is beneficial, old or new? New tax regime. Yes. So, like that, you have to write conclusion. Mr. Akhil should opt for new tax regime as tax payable is less. This is in the very first year, dear students, but he is having business income. So if he's opting for new tax regime next year, even if in new tax regime the tax is more, he will continue, continue, continue. And if he opts out, he cannot opt in because he's having business income. Is this clear to all of you? Check the whole problem. Business income, same. Income from other sources, same. Interest is exempt. Saving account interest, you will get the deduction. PPF, you will get the deduction and so on. In the old regime... You can calculate the tax in new, you know, for every 2,50,000, 5%, 5% extra you give. Okay, easy or not, this calculation? Let us take up one more problem. First one, that is related to salary. Now salary, so much in detail, they will not ask interlevel. Ki leave salary ke char bits calculate karo, you know, government limit and actual leave salary. So I'm going to start directly from the gross salary. Just reading the problem for all of you. Compute the following furnished by March 23 and you are requested to compute. X retired in December at the age of 58 after putting in service of 25 years and 9 months. When someone is retiring in the financial year that too in December, we will take the salary only for nine months from april till december because after that he's not receiving salary okay now hra you will give the exemption normal in the new one you will not give the exemption new regime mein hra ka exemption nahi milta old mein milta but now detailed if i teach it will be like teaching salary chapter which is equivalent to seven eight classes They'll not ask you this much in detail in final. Normal is touched up as business head. But just have picked up the problem for calculation of the tax. On retirement, he was paid gratuity. And he was not covered in the gratuity act. Then average salary of the last 10 months and actual gratuity received and government limit 20 lakhs, whichever is least. Leave salary also like that they have received. After retirement, he ventured into textile business and incurred a loss. Can you set off business loss in salary income? Answer is no. So this point has got no relevance except that you have to write a note. 
and he invested in PPF. Yes, old you will get a deduction, new you will not get a deduction. Okay. So after reading the problem, just to you know pay attention more on the first one only. Just a minute. Just a minute. What I'm doing is I'm solving it directly from the gross salary. Isko gross salary se solve karte hai. Problem number one. Computation of income and tax for Mr. X. Chalo, saath mein shuru karte hai. Yeah, the basic salary will be like uh, he has worked for only nine months and 40,000. So four nines are 36 and all. Directly, I want all of you to start from gross salary because each and every allowance, if we do in detail also, not desirable now. Just take the figures what I'm giving. 796, 250 is here and 715, 250 is here. This is old regime and this is 115 BAC new regime. Ma'am, why there is difference? Because your HRA exemption is allowed. There it is not allowed. Here, uh, the leave salary and all are to routine. Baki to sab same hai. But here, HRA root reverse one second huh? this income will be more in case of the new regime 115 BAC because HRA deduction is not allowed and this is old Chalo, se shuru karte. shall I give standard deduction in the new one no nil here shall I give yes how much deduction is allowed 50,000 so, what is the taxable salary? 796, 250 in the new one. In the old one, 715, 250 minus 50,000. So, 665, 250 in the old regime. Ye ho gaya aapka taxable salary. Is there any other income from other sources, business income and all? No. Then they have put the money in PPF. So under section ATC PPF deduction. Here to they will not get. Here of course they will get in the old regime 1,50,000. Now what is the TI or total income? Any doubt until now? I've just started with gross salary because no point. I can't like directly make you copy ki relief salary ke four bits or karo. Not necessary. So what is the total income? 796,250. And here, here you have given standard deduction also PPF also. Here you are not giving both. Now let us calculate the tax. Now let us first do the new tax regime. So on the first 2.5 lakh. Nil. Next 2.5 lakh, 5%, 12,500. Next 2.5 lakh, 10%, 25,000. ठीक है? तो ये हो गया आपका 750. 750 के अब अब इट इस 46,250. 796,250 minus 750. So on 46,250, it will be 15%. It is coming to how much? 6938. So what is, are you all writing or not? Anyone sitting in the class and just taking the screenshots won't help because you have to write three hours exam. So 6938 plus 25,000 plus 12,500. What is the tax coming? Forty-four, four thirty-eight. Plus add says he says four percent. 
मैम ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड टैक्स वो कम ना मैम आई मीन सेवन लैक फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ही है ना सेवन लैक्स बिलो टेन लैक्स ना मैम फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड आई एम डूइंग इट इन द न्यू टैक्स रिजीम फर्स्ट वन इज न्यू न्यू टैक्स रिजीम आई हैव शिफ्टेड द कॉलम दिस इज विदाउट स्टैंडर्ड डिडक्शन विदाउट पीपीएफ न्यू टैक्स रिजीम सो न्यू टैक्स रिजीम इज फॉर एवरी टू लैक फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इंक्रीज इन इनकम द टैक्स रेट्स will go up ha huh, that is true ma'am but you have exceeded 2.5 lakhs more 12500 ke baad directly 6900 6900 ha that is 750 ke above 46250 is there no on that 15% okay 1778 so what is your tax payable coming 250, 250, 250, 750, but above 750 also 796 is the income. So yeah, on the yeah, next I, one it is 15. I missed one. Yeah. Now, what is the tax? 46, 216, and above five and onwards is rounded off. Rounded off to 46, 220. New tax regime for every two lakh fifty thousand increase in income, five five percent the rate of tax is increasing, and there is concept of rebate and surcharge here also. Chalo now old one five lakh fifteen two fifty. So rebate to nahi milega. Now on the first two point five lakh tak, it is nil. Next two point five lakh twelve thousand five hundred. And five lakh ke above fifteen two fifty ka directly twenty percent. Now directly twenty percent. What you were saying is three zero five zero. So what is the tax coming to? tax is coming to correct 15550 into 4% is your cess 161712 so that should be rounded off to 161712 Now look at this. New tax regime. The income is more because standard deduction is not there. HRA is not there. Here you are getting so here old tax regime is better. बहुत फर्क है. Income is low in the old tax regime and tax is also low in the old tax regime. So conclusion. Mr. X should opt for. old tax regime as tax is low in the old tax regime the tax is low acha hai clear hai and just compare here income is low in the old tax regime tax is low it's not always the same case look at this here old tax regime the income is low but the tax is high new tax regime the income is more but the tax is low because once you cross 10 lakh here it is 30% there in the new tax regime once you cross 15 lakhs it is 30% so higher tax walon ko it is like you know if you are in the higher tax rate and all and jyada kuch deductions are not there the new tax regime is beneficial because the tax rates are low this no one is going to ask you an exam just giving a comparison and if you want to claim all the benefits like this fellow wants to do standard deduction etc and all and his income is also low better go for the old one shall i close this screen all clear Screen share is in, is becoming a trouble. One note I'm using always, but आज नहीं हो रहा था तो the whole screen I've shared. Anyhow, technology से रोज लड़ाई है, but समझ में आया? The new tax regime says 
if you want to go for new tax regime, not every SSE can give go. I'm just giving just division, individuals and HFs. Normal income for every two lakh fifty thousand increase in income, the tax rate should increase by five percent, and you will not get certain deductions and certain PPFs and all. You can opt every year if you have business income. Opt in, don't opt out. If you opt out, don't opt in again. Like that, all other details are there. Only individuals and HF for your normal income. Acha, even in new tax regime, if I am having lottery, thirty percent. Long term, short term, wala fifteen percent, twenty percent, whatever routine you are doing the problem, go ahead with that. Okay. So this is all about the new tax regime. I have built up a background. I have given you practice. This I am going to cover it up in your first class test. Your first class test portion is old tax rates, flat rates, unutilized marginal relief, all, and this one, the new tax regime, and your third topic, which we are going to do, that is alternative minimum tax. So this is a package. And one thing from now, I want to say, alternative minimum tax in that. I'll be solving problems in combination. AMT के साथ ना बड़ा favorite combination है. You know how businesses are done. Like McDonald's is with the burger is with the Coke, and then we have Vada Pav with the Lassi. These are the combos. Yeah, there are jumbo Vada Pav chains across India, and they started the concept of Vada Pav, which is spicy with Lassi, buttermilk all. So like that, alternative minimum tax. Whenever it is asked in exam, it is asked with section ten double A. Section ten double A is for S C Z. Total profit, total turnover. Export profit, export turnover is exempt under section ten double A. So I will use that, and with that, I will solve A M T problem. So write it down if you want to write for A M T class. The next class, section thirty five A D. Specified businesses and Section Ten Double A. You need to study and come. I will explain you all the concept of AMT carry forward, and we will solve the problems also of AMT. These are like background chapters. Once when we go to MAT and other cases and all, they will compare ki acha MAT and new tax regime aiga MAT and old. That time this part should be clear. Okay. Any more doubts? Anyone is having? Ask. No, then that's all for today's class. In the third class, we will continue with AMT. Keep preparing in writing. Most of the students at final level are really intelligent. They ask very nice queries, as you have been asking today. They understand everything. But dear students, mindset clear. रखो आपके नाम के आगे degree लगाना है, result लेना है, and then Bye bye to study hours. Till then, do writing practice. Huh? From your module also, you can start solving the problems. If you have any queries, we are connected through WhatsApp. Bye bye. That's all for today. Mm -hmm.